The IC Depot 750 gallon GPS controlled spray unit for brine. This unit is mounted to an F750. Uh, you're going to want to put that on a truck of 550 or larger. So uh, the weight of this thing pulls probably about 10,000 10, pounds. So make sure you put it on the right truck. Make sure it's securely fastened. You have three positions on either side. You got three different bolts. One, two, three. That you can use some heavy duty three inch or four inch wide ratchet straps. Strap it down forward and back and across. Whatever your company is comfortable with. It's a lot of weight. The wiring is fairly simple. We have two battery connections. One is the heavy wires for your hose reel. The lighter wire is for your controller. I've already hooked up it hooked it up to the positives. So now we're going to work backwards through the unit to plug up our power. So as you can see there's two different plugs here. Fairly simple, communication wire. Napa plug is for your battery that goes to the hose reel. Simple, plug that together. Next one is your communication wire. Make sure it's lined up. It can only go together one way, so just twist it until you can twist this unit, this connection, and lock it in place. That's number two. So this is our communication wire, gray wire. Now we're going to go up to the controller with our communication PID. We're going to find our communication wire that's attached to the controller. We're going to plug it together until it snaps in place. Okay, that's one. Now we have to power the unit, which is, it's all labeled, power cable, that one made me a liar, it's not labeled, but it, again, it can only, uh, can only plug in one way, you can't plug the plugs in differently. Push it until it locks in place, so that's the communication. Now we're going to go ahead and plug everything up to the controller. Which again, is another round pin connector. Has a cap on it. Take the cap off. Again, this will only go together one way. As you can see, it kind of fell in place. Twist and lock. Okay? That's the communication and the power. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to hook up our GPS unit. Typically, this is going to be up on the roof of your truck. This unit here is inside the cab. So we're just going to, for our demo and our, our, our show here, we're going to just plug this, simply screw this in place. That's your GPS uh, ground speed uh, detection device. Okay, so if we turn the unit on, you're going to press and hold the Pro key. Let it clear. It's currently in auto. You can also change this to manual to bypass the GPS. Auto. Switch one is your left boom. Switch two is your center boom. Switch three is your right boom. Still nothing, so if the unit was running, there's still nothing spraying. This is your master switch. The master switch controls everything. If you flip that on, we just heard the valves open. Turn it off, the valves shut. You can leave the master switch on and turn those off, and as you turn them on, they activate. Okay? So in manual mode, it, what it does is it'll bypass the GPS, and the minute that you turn this on, you have flow out to your boom. And it's not going to stop until you turn the master off or you turn one of those off. In GPS mode, with everything on, nothing will spray if the truck is sitting still. The moment the truck starts moving, it will uh, begin to spray. So what will happen to start the unit, turn the key on, and the first time, because we do not have an, an electric choke over here, it's the first thing that goes bad. Make sure the key's on, choke it, turn your gas on, okay? Motor 
is running. Motor's running. We're going to set our back pressure handle cracked open. So up here is your back pressure. Follow it to the tank. That's when the motor's running. You're not spraying. The pressure that's inside the pump is going back into the tank. So cracked open. So now that we have the motor running, we want to adjust our throttle to get our pressure gauge to 40 PSI. Now that it's there, it's ready to spray. If you look at the hour meter, or the, the uh, RPM meter right here, we're at 34, 33.5 a, a minute. So if you set it there, most likely you will be at your 40. So she's ready to spray. We'll go ahead and do it in manual mode. Since the truck's not moving, we'll turn on number one. And the master switch. We're going to turn on number two. Then we're going to turn on number three. Go back. Okay, I've turned everything off except for the master. So now I want, I want to turn on number two. We're running the tri-tip right now. So if we can get a good shot of that, you'll see the tri-tip spraying. All right. Now, on this boom, We have three different tips. So you got the tri-tip, pencil or fan tip, and then you have a pencil tip. So we're going to go ahead and put this one on pencil. Okay. Pencil tip, tri-tip, which means three streams, and your fan tip. So we're going to go ahead and leave this one on fan. We're going to turn this one on to Try to, uh, that's fan. Try tip, and then we're gonna do a straight stream so you can see the difference. Fan tip, try tip, pencil tip. Turn it off, turn the master switch off, turn the key off. Your hose reel. First, we want to unlock it. You're going to spray some sidewalks. You have a ball valve right here that isolates your hose reel. Across the valve is off. In line with the red hose is on. The GPS unit, the control panel, the only thing that you need to do is have the motor running. The hose reel is set up before your servo valve and your flow meter. So you don't have to worry about turning on a switch to run the hose reel other than starting the motor. So we're going to start the motor back up. See that? The motor's good and hot. Fired right up. Straight stream. You want to fan, let go of the handle. So this is what's called a demand gun. The harder you squeeze it, the straighter it gets. So slightly squeeze is a fan. As I squeeze, the fan closes. I'm going to spray some steps. Parking lot or uh, sidewalk. Just like so. Got to reel your hose up. Some electric reel. Push the button. When you're done, lock your hose reel in place so when you drive down the road, this doesn't continue to bounce loose and then your gun's bouncing off the ground. 
You also have a work light. Work light switch, up is on, down is off. Fairly simple. Some things to note before I go into the, the unload, offload and load positions. You have a flow meter on top here. So this counts your water or tells you how much flow is going through and gives you a readout on your screen. Flow meter. Flow meter is reversible. So if it, if it stops working, you can take it out, turn it around once, and you're back in business. I'm not sure if you can see it up here, but you have a, what's called a servo valve. That opens and closes based on your ground speed to let more or less flow of water or brine out. That controls the three valves that are here. The valves will open fully. The servo valve controls the flow coming through to give you more at your boom. So we've ended our day, right? We want to come back. We have probably 600 gallons of brine in here. You don't want to pick that up uh, with your fork truck. You want to empty it off. So you're going to attach your storage tank hose here. I'm going to rotate that handle there. And we're going to close our back pressure valve. We'll fire up the motor. Everything that's in that tank is now going to come through and back out to your tank. Once you're done, put a crack in your back pressure valve, close the handle, disconnect the hose, put your plug back in, relock everything down. Okay, that's the dump off. A week from now, you're gonna go out and do some more spraying because another snowstorm's coming in. Tank's empty. You've already loaded it on the truck. It's all wired. You've tested it. It's ready to go. This is your unload valve. So you don't have to climb to the top to stick a hose in. Hook your tank here, storage tank hose here. Make sure the storage tank hose is full first. You may have to stand here and hold the hose on your shoulder so it stays in line because what will happen is, is you'll get a little bit of an air gap because of the weight of the hose and it won't suck. The way to fix that is just kind of hold the hose. So you take your, 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 uh, your plug out, right? Easy peasy. Put your hose in. You're going to rotate your handle here towards the pump right there fire up the pump open up your ball valve to the tank open up your ball valve uh, your your uh, your back pressure valve all the way because that's how it's going to put it into the tank fairly simple all right so we got our stuff we've loaded our tank we've rotated this load valve back towards the tank And then we're going to reset our back pressure valve, close it, crack it open. Okay, well, now we're ready. We've disconnected our hose from the storage tank. Now we're ready to go out and spray. All right, all of our, all of our spray units have a filter. This one's located here between the pump. So if you have one of our units... Periodically, you're going to want to clean the filter, especially if you begin to see a low flow. What we want to do is we want to isolate it so that we don't, you don't get soaking wet. I'm going to rotate the handle towards the pump. So it's wanting to try to think it's sucking from your tank, but it's not. We're going to close our back pressure valve. And then we're going to unscrew this. And because it's up high, we're going to, we're going to get a little water flow out of that. Okay, so we're just going to pull it out. All right, take the screen out. As you can see, there's nothing in this screen. Okay, nothing in the cap. When you take it apart, be very careful that you don't lose the O-ring. Because if you lose the O-ring on any of the spray units, it's not going to spray. It's going to suck air, and then you're going to call us. And we'll have to send you a gasket. So you're done. Put it back together. Voila. Rotate your handle back to the pump. Crack open your back pressure, filter's clean, go do your thing. Once we're done with a snowstorm, 
flush this area really good with good clean water. Clean everything down. You're not going to hurt it with, with water. Yeah, I know it's cold out and it may freeze, but the key to a successful brine sprayer is keeping the flywheel and the stator free of salt brine. It sucks air through this motor. And that air contains particles of salt. As it dries, the salt builds up. If you let it sit, the motor will lock up. It will not pull, it will not turn. So you flush this out with water. Stick the hose in this cover. Stick the hose and, and, and hose in here, just as hard as you can squirt the water. And then any crack that you can find, throw some water in. Once you've done that, fire the unit back up. Fluid film, right? Nice little dispenser hose. We're gonna take it and we're gonna stick it up here in that little hole. And we're gonna spray and spray and spray till you start to see it dribble out about down here on the bottom. So that's that side. And then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna stick our hose in here with the motor running. We're gonna spray and spray and spray until we see it dribble out. So what we're attempting to do is coat that flywheel and the stator with a, a, a non-corrosive uh, lubricant. Keep this thing free. Because if it doesn't stay clean and free, again, you won't get that far and you're, you're, you'll think your motor's locked up. Way to solve that, pull the recoil off. There's a little cup in here. You can put a, uh, a socket on the nut that holds the flywheel in place and just gently break it free. The Icing Depot, 750 gallon brine sprayer. You got further questions, call us at 954-781-9200.